Hello there. Thank you very much for joining us on yet another episode of The Digest. I do hope that you're taking care of yourselves. As you know, the second wave of the COVID-19 pandemic has really shown us flames in this 2021 new year. My name is Francesca Piribanda. Thank you so much for joining us once again. Now, since independence, mining has been Zambia's economic lifeline. However, over five decades later, copper mining has had unstable returns on national treasury due to underperformance of key mining companies and also unreliable prices on the London Metal Exchange. The problems at Konkola Copper Mines, KCM, whose parent company, Vedanta, is locked in a fierce court battle with government since 2019, has further deranged the operations of the once adored KCM that has its operations in Chidilawombwe, Chingola, Titwe, and Nampundwe. Another notable challenge in the sector has been uncertainty at Mopani Copper Mine when a year ago management decided to put the mine on care and maintenance. But the decision was strongly condemned by the Mine Workers Union of Zambia, Moose, because about 11,000 jobs would be lost. Hence, the company was compelled to rescind its decision. Our staffer, Clive Kalunga, on the Copper Belt, has compiled us this documentary.
This transition is taken professionally and that the people of Zambia do not lose. These men, we appreciate the fact that they have existed before KCM came into Zambia. And even as they live, they are going to leave the KCM mine for the people of Zambia. I am here to receive this petition and I am gladly receiving this petition because as a, 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 a messenger of His Excellency the President, my role is to receive this petition and be able to bring it to the President so that he can table it to the Cabinet. We want to thank His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Zambia, for listening to the cries of the miners. We want to thank the President, for the Republican President, Mr. Edika Chagalungu, for listening to the cries of the people. I want to buy the land. President Asugai. President T. President A. We have an answer to that. To a couple of our union. When the meeting to Ale in the park. When Shaba will go to work for the man. When Shaba will go to work for the man. When Shaba will go to work for the man. When Shaba will go to work for the man. When Shaba will go to work for the man. When Shaba will go to work for the man. As we speak, Honorable Minister, he planned to share the share. He scrapped the deal in my share and bounced. So, there is a great point. So, as we celebrate today, the departure of the data.
Two of the workers in my industry will be replaced by the machines. I can tell you, give you an example at Chinese mine, uh, southeast of Bodi Mukurumbe mine. The underground loaders are now operated at the surface. The mines, underground mines, are automated. So you have few few workers working underground uh, using technology. And we, we see that that is going to replace a lot of miners. A lot of miners will be out of employment or will not be employed because of the, the, the technology that is being happening. Uh, we can also look at Rumwana or Karumbira. Uh, there is a 400 tons loader. 400 tons lo loader or truck. Uh, so one. If, if you had if you had the operators working with thirty ton, thirty ton trucks, like well, most of the trucks are thirty ton, and now they bring in a, a four hundred ton. How many four hundred thirty tons in four hundred? And those people who are operating those thirty trucks are, are operators. It means now you have only one operator. Uh, maybe approximately four hundred divided by thirty. You have over 15 workers replaced by one machine. We have also seen uh, companies closing, like for instance, Mopan put the mine on care and maintenance, that uh, citing COVID. And that decision alone, uh, more than 11,000 workers have gone, uh, uh, particularly for the contractors. Mopan, you hear that Mopan have demanded the contracts for the contest that we are running mining was not mining operations were done by the contractors. So mining uh, employed a lot of contract employees. And the, these contract employees are the power of the, the employees at Mopan. So all those workers have lost jobs because they were the termination of the contracts. And of course the reason is also COVID and the other related reasons. So labor has suffered. Employees have suffered. Uh, job losses, uh, loss of income, as I said, uh, through some companies. Some companies say they are putting workers on forced uh, Some workers were told to work from home, and uh, that has reduced income for those workers. And uh, that has also affected their families. If we do things correctly as a country, uh, that's why you see Chinese are rushing to Zambia. You see most of European countries are rushing to Zambia to get, come and get this wealth and take it to their countries. What is important as a country, particularly the leadership, we must learn from the past mistakes, the previous government's mistakes. In Kaunda, these mines were under, were under the private ownership. Kaunda saw that the benefits were not as much as expected. Kaunda nationalized. Under nationalization, we saw the benefits that this country uh, got from ownership of the mines. We saw more schools being built. We saw roads being built. We saw even more graduates. The graduates that uh, have been running the mine industry and running this country, most of them are products of the benefits of our mineral wealth. Isolation in the name of COVID-19, but I came out strongly and reminded the mining firms that uh, 
there is no law that has been suspended as a result of COVID-19. Uh, and uh, when you look at the Zambian labor law, it's still intact. And we expect that all workers must be respected. The investor must respect a worker, and especially Zambian workers. At the same time, we expect workers to do their part by working hard and making sure that they also contribute to the high production uh, in the mining sector. But uh, in a nutshell, what I'm saying is we need to have a win-win situation so that our investors are able to motivate workers, workers are paid well, because we will not support workers being paid peanuts or slave wages, but we would expect us to have a win-win situation, and that's the more reason why uh, I'm happy about the leadership of His Excellency President Edgar Chagalungu and the PF government, that we've continued creating an enabling environment for investors and all businesses to flourish. Now, government has since taken over 100% ownership of Mupani Copper Mines from the 73.1% previously held by the company, the parent company firm Glencore. Now, the decision has triggered further uncertainty in the stakeholders that doubt that ZCCM IH has the capacity to run the sensitive sector of economy. Now, despite the hiccups shown in the documentary, there are positive gains made by the mining giant First Quantum Minerals Limited in Northwestern Province that continues to make significant progress in the mining sector in an era of the raging COVID-19 that has paralyzed most companies worldwide. Well, that's it. That's all the time we have for you on The Digest. Tell us what stories you would like to see us delve into. Remember that we value your feedback. You can email us at documentaries at damotvzambia.com from me and the production crew. Goodbye. Thank you for your time. Remember, mask up, sanitize, and stay home unless you really have to go out there. Goodbye.